time. Uh, well, it looks like we're going to get the stew because they've stolen it. Uh, Michael the class. Class Michael. Uh, he and I have just had a little prayer time in my office, and uh, um, I think you're going to enjoy this uh, time together. Um, Michael is uh, going to, uh, yeah, you want to see everybody? Yeah, Michael is going to start, like most press conferences start, uh, you know how to spell his name because you have seen it on the website. Um, like most pre uh, press conferences would start with, uh, oh, I would say five to seven minute introduction uh, that should lead into questions, and after that, it's just going to be raise your hand point, okay? Um, I know a lot about Michael, having read his book and visited with him a few times, uh, helped him find an agent and different things like that. Um, and so I tell every class this every year, um, your assignment is based on the questions you ask inside of this next hour, okay? Uh, if, if you miss something significant, I'm not going to bail you out, okay? It's just you don't know that information. So ask probe, think of what you've read, okay, and listen to his answers. Let those be your guide for the next question. Michael, let's go. All right. And any questions valid? To, to me, I don't, I'll answer anything. If I can't, if I don't feel like really the Lord wants me to answer something, I'll do it. But at any rate, uh, I've been saved for four years. Uh, I think you guys have read some about me uh, up to four years ago. I was in the satanic side or on the dark side for 20 years. We're up about 22 years, and um, came to the Lord in a, you know, in a, I was getting ready to commit suicide, and, and uh, writing suicide notes out to my kids, and I happened to go to a men's retreat, which I really didn't want to go, but it was kind of a, I got coaxed into it, and ended up turning my life to the Lord, and so the, for the last four years, uh, I mean, he said to go, and I just went, and so I've been talking about it, speaking about it, going to prisons, going everywhere, just talking about the Lord, so. I'm here today just to, like uh, your, your professor says, to, to talk to you in this project that you've got and answer any questions I can. Uh, the dark was dark. I mean, I got into some really dark stuff. Uh, I could say probably more in a prison. When I went to some maximum security prisons lately, you're, there's more freedom there to talk than in a classroom, I think. You know, I can get more blunt with those guys. But uh, anyway, I've been doing a lot of that stuff and a lot coming up doing really well, wrote the book, God told me to write the book, and I wrote it, and it's doing really well, and, and uh, people are getting changed, I'm getting letters from Scotland and England and all over the world just in four months' time, so I'm going to, I want to open it up, you guys read about me and stuff, so who has a question? Uh, did you say my God spoke to you, uh -huh. and then, but like, in some of the videos I read and stuff, it talks about how Satan talked to you, mm -hmm. is it like a prominent voice you hear, or is it kind of like through um, different things that God or Satan was speaking to you? Well, with God, it's just a knowing. It was an all-knowing. It's just like, all of a sudden, I know something I didn't know before, and, I, and it was peaceful and pure, and it was just absolutely, that was his voice. Okay. You know, I mean, it's not an audible voice, it was just an all-knowing. So. I see you have a tattoo on your arm. Mm -hmm. Is that from the line of day? No, uh, I was speaking up in Colorado, preaching at some churches in, in uh, Colorado. Never had a tattoo, and there was a girl out in the, uh, it was funny, there was a girl out in the audience, and probably 10,000 people that I was speaking to, and she came up late and she said, I don't know why, but I just want to tell you, if you need a tattoo, I do tattoos. I only do Christian ones, but I do tattoos, and something inside of me, she said, the Lord spoke to me, if you want one, and it was a really a weird week, a uh, really challenging week, and I ended up saying say you don't have me so it's Acts 26 17 and 18 send you to them open their eyes turn them from darkness to light from the power of Satan to God which I feel is the commission of Lord uh, yes uh, you wrote in your book that when you denounce God and join with Satan you felt your soul darken at that like, moment mm -hmm. uh, could you explain how exactly that felt dirty sudden just, I didn't think I had any light in me at the time, but I know that now I did, but just totally just, just, just feel vile, just filled with vile.
Was there ever a time you felt frightened or scared whenever you were following the, the Satanism? Yeah, when I started trying to get out of it. But, uh, so not at first. I was too oblivious to emotions or feelings, and that's from, I'm sure, growing up the way I did. But, but later on when I tried to get out of it, I knew I didn't recognize how dark I was in to it. Why do you think that is? Later on, because mm -hmm. light started, there was more and more people around me trying to probe me into Christianity, and then I could all of a sudden taste something that they were trying to give to me, or smell, not taste literally, but emotionally and everything. Tried, I, I tried to, I started sensing light, and then that made me see how dark I was. Uh, when you look back on your life, was it easier to submit to Satan or to submit to God and what He wanted you to do? Probably Satan, because I was, I was in this world. He says, if you love this world or anything, and then you're an enemy of mine, God does. And, and once you're in this world, it, it was just easier to keep on doing bad than to try to turn good. It's, it's a really harder life now, you know, as far as the challenges. Were you apprehensive about coming out with the book and kind of branding yourself a reformed Satanist right. in public? Yeah, very much. And, uh, and what kind of scared you about that? Well, it didn't scare me. I just knew that my family's already under attack, and I get death threats and stuff all the time. So I knew that once I publicized that, you know, you know you're know, you retarded, you're, you're, you're sick, you're mentally ill, all that stuff's going to start coming out, and then it affect, might affect my kids, mm -hmm. my three children. You mentioned your children. Are you in contact with them, and were you in contact with them whenever you were going through? Yeah, I've been in contact with them. God's kind of spared them from. I, I hid most of what I did. Uh, my youngest daughter knew what was going on. She came in at certain things that she shouldn't have ever seen. But we're no, we get along great. They're pretty well adjusted overall. You said you like hid things. Was it because like you were you were scared for them to see it, even though you worshipped it and kind of you know you believed you were right or at that point in time? Was it something you said you hid it from your kids? Or was that something? Well, like, what was that reason? There's still a lot of a dad's love for my kids, so as much as I could love, which wasn't easy for me to do, I still protected them from bad things, you know what I mean? Even though I was in really bad stuff. As much as I could protect them, I did. So I didn't want them being hurt. Um, like, on your website, there is a picture uh, mostly of just one of your daughters. And I was just wondering uh, what your relationship was like with her while she was like growing up and learning Satanism, and how has it changed today? Uh, she's just all about. She goes, the most godly men I know is Craig Rochelle and you. She knows Craig personally, but uh, she just she loves it. She's a little evangelist, so uh, she is absolutely. God's been speaking to her since she was a little kid, so she is wonderful. All three of my kids is wonderful, but I'm closer to her because she is. I think the closest to the Lord, and we kind of click. Did you ever try to bring your family into Satanists or anyone else? Mm, there's some other people I tried to, yeah. Usually kids. How old are your kids? Uh, 31, or 32, 30, and 28. Uh, uh, could you describe the extreme contrast between your lowest point of your life before when you were a Satanist to highest point uh, past your transformation? Past my transformation. The lowest was probably on the hill. When I was writing suicide notes out. I had them all written but one or two. I mean, there was a lot, so many lows. I can't even get, I can't even describe the lows. The depression is almost, uh, if I can say it in here, orgasmic. The depression gets so bad that you almost get tied to it and lured down into it. Satan just keeps on getting closer and closer to death and then it turned it kind of got to me. I liked living on the edge, so I lived on the edge. Uh, the highest moment was, you know, probably on the hill too, when I reckon, when I knew that there really was a God, which is, I might as well say, my favorite scripture is Job 19:25. I know my redeemer lives, and that moment I knew He was alive and well. And so was your lowest and highest point was in one single. Oh yeah, yeah, I'd say so. That's cool. Yeah. Did you ever think about what your family would have done had you committed suicide? No, I didn't care. You mean afterwards? Mm -hmm. No, I don't really. I, 
be honest, I don't look past today. I really, I never do. I wrote a book about it and everything. Some of what I wrote about affects me, but I don't look. You know. I'm the same way in a view that uh, you've seen some signs about your decision to check that out, like blood drops and like angry emails and letters and things like that. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Some signs. Where we, I'm trying to think. Uh, it was like a, there was a radio interview. Signs, blood drops. I'm trying to think back to what I was referring to. I don't recall. Well, go ahead with the blood drops thing, uh, the bleeding. Oh, you mean as far as cutting and such? Um, that, that's not going to Okay. <laughs> no, I cut a lot, and not all Satanists. All Satanists are cutters, but not all cutters are Satanists. And uh, I think First Kings eighteen twenty eight says, "For they cut themselves from knives and lances." Mark five five, praise God. Cave cut himself with stone. So, cutting is just part of, uh, of, uh, of a, almost like a fasting on the dark side. It's just inherent in there. There's a lot of blood, by the way. Um, you said that God told you to um, write the novel, mm -hmm. but was there anything else that like compelled you to write the novel to just kind of like get it behind you? Well, that didn't compel me. I got a uh, drunk driver hit me the day before on uh, August 9th of 09 or 10th, somewhere in there. Hit 115 miles an hour. I was coming off the turnpike and he rear ended me. He was high and drunk and everything. And, uh, so I couldn't lift anything. I needed shoulder surgery. It cracked my neck. And I, I mean, I was, looked like I do now. I was just, but I was starting to hurt. And after I went to the doctor, he said, now you need to have surgery. And here's what, and I couldn't lift or anything. So I'm sitting in a Starbucks and that's when the Lord says, well, I said, what am I going to do? I've been living with my hands. He says, you're going to write a book. So the only, those two things, you know, I would have never sat still had it not been for that car wreck. I wouldn't have met you because I've never been in Panera, and you know, I just, I just think it's all divine. I don't think a car wreck was a bad thing. Um, out of all the the religious figures around here, why do you have any idea why Craig was the one that you were going, you're supposed to kill? I hated him because my daughter loved him, and I started seeing her look at him instead of me. And naturally, she's not going to look at me for her spiritual guidance, but she always spoke about him. My girlfriend always spoke about him, and so I just started. You know, was it mental illness? Absolutely, that was crazy. But also, you know, there was an assignment to take him out, and I think that went with what was inside of me, the hatred for him, and Satan used that to try to How did you, as a Satanist, start a relationship with someone who was Christian? Easy. You know, I just, I didn't, uh, I, I put on, I mocked, you know, it was just like I was flipping God off all the time. It was just like I was mocking God, and Taking her further and further down. Did she not know you were Satanist? Not at the moment, no. I was, I was faked it pretty good. And uh, over a year or two years, about two years afterwards, she knew something was really wrong. And again, you know, I don't want to get too deep into, you know, her sin and what she was into. You know, she started falling from her faith. So it's, it was pretty easy, actually. Um, can you? Uh Tell what it was uh, like. What was going through your mind on January thirteenth? Like, what, what, how were you justifying what you were planning to do that day? It's just a, a sign that there's no different. Uh, back then, cops to me were like dogs, so killing a cop would be like killing an animal. So, had you had any other like assignments like that before? Yeah. Yeah. What can you tell us some of them? No. No. Um, why do you think God's word penetrated your soul that day? On um, the 13th? Mm -hmm. was, he was so, uh, so there. I mean, I mean, I've been to church. I've heard, I had literally thousands praying for me nationwide because I was out passing satanic Bible down. So that particular day, he didn't show himself, but he, he did everything but that. I mean, it was so pure, so clean. I've never, if I was ever clean as a child, it felt like that. And I, you couldn't turn it down, so. Did you? I know. Okay. Um, I think it is a uh, courage and determination to put out your feeling for others. Uh, I want to know what's the, what's the reason to encourage you can uh, show your inside feeling for others. How I? Yeah, how to, uh, what's the reason to encourage 
encourage you to uh, put your thumb in, inside um, of the ministry of God. Why? I want to encourage others or encourage, you know, I don't know. I mean, uh, what's the... Uh, it's hard for me to share my feelings. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's the most difficult thing, but God told me to do it, and I'm doing it. So, uh, I think crying's hard for me. Every, you know, emotions. I just got married three months ago. That's hard for me, you know, being close to somebody. So, uh, but he says to go, and I go. And uh, I learn along the way. I'm getting sanctified along the way like the rest of us. So. Oh, sorry. I, I did a little research on Satanism, mm -hmm. and I learned that some Satanists were, are theistic Satanists, right. and others are um, well, they, atheist, yeah. atheistic Satanists. Yeah. Um, one regarding Satan as a supernatural deity, and the others um, just viewing him as a symbolic figure. What type of Satanists were you? you I, I went from Lovayan, which is atheist, to uh, theistic. So I went from one, I went, I just got this the satanic Bible, which is really they're saying there's not, there's not Satan or God, that you're your own God. And I switched from that and just got into Satan was my God. What made you transition into believing that he was a deity? Power. The power that I got. The more that I served him. There was a lot of power on the dark side, but I mean much more on the light side, but I, I was just getting deeper and deeper into the power. That was like the cure that kept my kept me chasing after it. Um, you started to rebel against religion as a child. Why did you, what made you do it? I was raised, uh, all kinds of stuff. You know, I was just being tortured. So I carved on and cut on and, you know, so after a while I just, I didn't care about any religion, you know, especially Christianity. Um, you had just spoke about some the power from the dark side, but also you have said um, since you've become a Christian, you've received the gift of discernment. Mm -hmm. Now, I just wanted to know, if was there any spiritual gifts that you had received from Satan as a Satanist? No, because you've received the spiritual gifts, I believe, from when you're when God breathes life into you. So the only difference to me and a tarot card reader is the, the God I'm serving. So I really had that gifting beforehand. But when I switched over, then God started using it for his good. I, I believe we get the gifts right from when he breathes life into us. Uh, your home life, whenever you were younger, where did you grow up? And what um, were both your parents at home or um, who... Who raised you, I guess? Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, both my parents worked. And I was out of the house after about seven. So, I, I, I mean, I was just at somebody's house all the time, or neighbors, or sleeping on a hill. or I was just out of the house. There was too much abuse there. So, seven or on, I really don't remember too much in that period other than just survival. But Los Angeles. Do you think, um, you said that everything is divine. Do you think that like your journey through Satanism was divine so you could get to the place that you are? Right. So not be born. <laughs> you know, I, I really, you know, I look back and I, although 51 years was horrible, you know, my life, I'm glad I went through it because I'm not probably who I would be had I not gone through it. So I think it's a blessing. Um, how do you feel people judge you about the past? So? That didn't bother me. They spit on my face. That happened a couple of weeks ago. Prison, you know, they did some stuff. You know, oh well, I'm not telling a story. You know, you can't dispute a changed life, and I have enough witnesses there that it doesn't. It's like they either don't believe it, or they either believe it, or they don't. And then the judge in the past, then, you know, there's plenty of scripture I could use against that, but I don't even do that. I just try to love on. It doesn't really bother me. Sin, yes. Relapse, no. I've never been back. In the heaven? Um, did you ever wonder that because of who you were in worshiping Satan that you wouldn't get into heaven? No. Not after I got saved. You know, I just got spoken. I listened and I believed. And that's all I need to know. That's my faith now. Um, does Satan still try to contact you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Just through dreams, usually, or vision. You know, I mean, just. All the time. I mean, it's just, it's, he 
is after the righteous, is after the righteous is still a word out of his mouth, and it's going to help with me. He's, you know, there's a, I have a lot of prayer covering, and, and a lot of men in my life, and women, and uh, pastors, and we pray. And it's a battle. You don't just raise your hand and go out, and it's easy, you know. It's a battle, let me tell you, and especially on the front that I'm on. church just two weeks ago, just in church, because my, my visions or dreams kind of, uh, they're like pictures that come to me. And I just saw my taking Craig's head off, and I'm going, where did that come from? You know, and then I remember the scripture, hold captive all thoughts to be in so Christ. But I remember, here Craig and I, are, we're not buddy buddies, but we're friends, and, and here something comes into me, and they're like that, it's just like pictures of gruesome stuff, that's all I can tell you. Pretty disturbing stuff. How's your relationship with Craig now? It's good. It's great, actually. Have y'all been able to talk about um, your previous thoughts? Yeah, yeah, we have. I have asked him forgiveness. He goes, you don't have to. You already asked me about like five times. I forgave you. And he goes, this is cool. God is really doing a wonder. Uh, I think the day that I got arrested at church was probably the pivotal day when I had a talk. I just, he just doesn't look back. There's no past to him. Uh, just now, you mentioned about the God, and the God you could do that for you, you know. But maybe uh, some person don't have, have no God in their life. Do you have think they lack of something? Just think they lack something? No, lack of. Maybe they lost something, or? I don't understand. I, I mean, uh, do you think they um, lack? Like? Oh, uh, do they lack of something? Yeah. Uh, they lack of God. You don't mean that they just can't receive Him, you mean? Or know who He is? I mean, um, I know in some, um, because different culture and different country people have don't, uh, don't uh, have different uh, belief. So maybe in some other countries, uh, the people don't have, don't have a defin definition or meaning of the God. They don't know what that means. Maybe they just have their life without God. Right. How do you think about that? Do you think that God is more important for everyone, or? I think he's big enough to handle any situation. So if he may not show himself in a charismatic way he did me, or in a way that you guys know him, but he'll touch them somehow. God's on every road, and if, is that kind of answer? God's still there, whatever country. So I think he'll touch him in whatever way that their surrounding allow him to, to touch them. Does that answer it, or? <coughs> Probably not, maybe. Sorry. You said you were arrested at church. Um, what were the charges? Or Well, they I was, they had wanted posters up all over every campus. And Victory Christian and, and Life. And uh, they spotted me. I changed kind of the way I looked from mm -hmm. time to time and stuff. And they, I, My daughter actually turned me on. She said he's getting ready to go up there. So, uh, so anyway, they arrested me. Called Craig and said, "What do you want?" They took him off the stage because they knew that I had this plot against them. And uh, so, what do you want to do? And he goes, "Let me pray for a minute." And he was off the stage and interrupt service. And he goes, "God just spoke to me. Said he's going to be a powerful warrior for Christ. He's he's a minister. Here's he doesn't know this yet, but here's what's going to happen in his life. Let him go. Let that man go. We're going to show him the love that God's shown all of us." And they let him go, okay. which freaked me. How did it make you feel that your daughter turned you in? I thought it was great. She should have turned me in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, during the time when you were following Satan, did you have a lot of friends or were you more of a loner? Or? I was a loner. I mean, I had friends in my business and such, but I had nobody close. Um, do you think you ever, ever would have turned to Christianity if you had actually killed him? If I did, I'd be have, I'd be preaching in prison. That's for sure. I'm sure. Well, I, I guess I probably. I think God, His hand was so much. Yeah, I think my book, if you read it, that's that's what the book's about. His pursuit over one person, and He's not a respecter of persons. So it just shows how much He pursued. 
Can you read another segment? What's, how, how do you start that conversation? Uh, just scars. Usually, uh, I write about a few encounters, but usually it's scars. You know who they are. You know, and then you just feel it spiritually. Do you try to convert them? Like, or? Oh, you mean now? Yeah, yeah, now. No, I, you know, I don't run into that many. You know, it's, it's funny. I ran into a lot before, and I don't run into that many. I think God's got kind of a bubble around me for a season, you know. But I really don't. Uh, I've ran into a few at the mall, you know, that I know where they're at. And I'm staying up in Guthrie for a reason right now. The last four months, uh, that's town's got a lot of that stuff going on right now. So I don't know what I'll do if I run into them. The Lord says, you know, be afraid not what to speak. It's not you, the Holy Spirit in you. So uh, just uh, run into them. I guess he'll show me what to say. You guys are quiet over here. Um, in your life as a Satanist, do you feel that you're uh, possessed by demons or Satan himself? Uh, demons, definitely. Uh, what would you say to someone who maybe has... Good question, though. ...has either been a Christian all their life or has been a Christian at some point who's low in their faith? What would you say to them to encourage them? I've been teaching nationwide just stay in present with the Lord. And I'll go back not even 10 minutes because you can't change that. And if you're anywhere in your mind right now than, than in this room, then you're missing what the Holy Spirit's trying to do here right now, what God's trying to do. So that's how I encourage people. Just stay present with God. Don't compare yourself to another Christian or anybody else. And God will start changing your heart right this second. I'm not talking three seconds from now, right this second. And it's powerful because he wants us to stay right here, right now with him. Or we miss out on what he's trying to teach us. So that's how I encourage people. If even in the low in their faith, God's you know He's there. We know we know all the scriptures about He's there with us through the storm and um, just to edify and encourage each other is what we're here for. I mean that's what we're here for. And my way of doing it is getting them to know that stop comparing to the world. The only way you can be low basically is get out of yourself. You're being self-centered. You know, keep the thoughts pure. You know, keep thoughts of God and of pure things. And most of the time when we get low, we're just being self-centered. That's my belief. We're just too centered on ourselves and we need to get over ourselves. I read that you had a regular prayer life with Satan. What type of things did you pray to Satan for? Power, uh, women, you know, the world, money, the riches of this world, evil that I can carry out as evil deeds, you know, and not get caught. That kind of stuff. Um. Okay. Okay. Um, do you think Satan was ever actually able to answer any prayers? Yeah, absolutely. How so? He's, God said he could. I mean, he can touch us through, he has to go to God first, now that I know that. But I think that he has plenty of power here on earth. He's still the prince of the air. He still rules us with earth. I know it sounds maybe like, I don't know if you guys believe that or not, but he still is a prince of the air until God comes back. Look around us. Shows you how much power he's got in this fallen world. You said sometimes you would have um, like demons inside you, and then like when you were on the floor last night, God came and spoke to you. Can you tell me like a main difference between the two? Like I understand that one's dark and one's light, but peace. Remember, like peace. Something in me, there was a peace that I never knew before. A, a just total like I couldn't even move when God started speaking, and it was like it's like I was sitting on a lap. Just like somebody was caressing me and just taking care of me, and, you know, healthily. You know, like a, a mom should be or a dad. It was just like something I never had. Did you ever feel like with with either presence you lacked, if you will? Uh, more yeah, in the dark, it's, there's times like I didn't have a choice because I had already made so many choices. Of like, I, But I did. I just didn't realize that Satan kept on trying to... It was just confusing. I don't know what to say. By the way, I'll throw one little thing. I think Satan still thinks he's going to win the war. Think about that. Because if there's no truth in him, and he's the father of lies, he can deceive himself into that. Um, I see that animal sacrifices and bloodletting are common practices for Satanists. Um, could you explain their purposes in the religion and how they affect the It was just the taking of a life. It was exhilarating, I guess. 
and I speak, spoke to a lot of murderers now in prison, it was the same thing to them. Some of them were so possessed that just taking a life was a trip their trigger. Kind of like a high. Thing. Yeah, it was, well, and then in the Old Testament, taking, you know, they kept slaying a lamb for the sins, you know. I, I, Satan just tries to counterfeit everything God does. And now that I look back, it's just the taking of the bloodletting and the taking of life was uh, uh, just a selfish, uh, almost cleansing in a way, release. I don't know what to say other than that. It's sick, I know that. Um, I, um, in an interview, you said that your divorce was um, one thing that led you to Satanism. Um, how long were you, were you married and what led to the divorce? Nine years. And we just, we didn't have a foundation. I mean, we, you know, it was, we didn't know each other really. You know, uh, we didn't have a foundation. Neither one of us were Christians. And uh, just typical world got in the way. I was working all the time. And we just got apart, away from each other. And uh, there was some violence in there and stuff like that. So it's a good thing we got away from each other now. No. Um, if neither you or your wife were um, Christians, how were your kids able to be brought to the light? And how did both of you feel about that at the time? Uh, well, because I think that I believe in revelation knowledge. I believe that there's more than just the word. Everything lines up with the word. But I think today... We don't put enough emphasis on the Holy Spirit and Revelation, like Paul says in Galatians 1, 17, I think. Hey, I, I learned this. I didn't learn this from man, nor was I taught it, but Revelation from Christ. And I think my daughter was getting Revelation from Christ. And uh, now they're all getting stronger. And, the, you know, my, my oldest is coming, too. She, I don't think she's saved yet, but, you know, as we would say she was. But she's starting to, just through the book and through my life in the last four years, she's saying, this thing, you're going to go back, you're going to go back. And, and, but she's looking at all the things God's done, and she, she's in awe. She's, the world is getting her in awe over what's going on with my life, so it's turning her to God. So is she also like a Satanist? No. Um, she just was not believing? She's Catholic. She goes to church maybe once a year, and that's her walk with God. As far as I know. Um, how do you think you were able to love, or were you able to love your family at all before coming to Christ? I don't think I did. I don't think, unless we know the love of Christ, I don't know how we can love others. Now, we can have a worldly view of it, but I couldn't even, I got so hard after 20 years of it. Now that I'm hearing stories back from them, and from stuff that happened, they're now they're recounting stuff that, uh, about lack of love, and, you know, so. I didn't know what love was. And just to clarify, you have three daughters? No, she has a son. He's my youngest. Okay. Yeah. He's in the army. You mentioned earlier the uh, the scripture in Job. Are there any other passages that really stood out to and impacted you when you started turning towards God? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He is well in the secret place the most high shall abide in the shout of mine and say, the Lord is my refuge and fortress. Psalm 91. Because God just, now that's one. God just gave me that song. And the angel did, if you ever read the book, I was headed to do some bad stuff back on the East Coast, and I picked up a hitchhiker, and, and I know he was an angel now. And he says, memorize Psalm 91 and put it in your heart. And by the way, I'm praying for your salvation and your three kids' salvation. How, you know, here I had satanic Bibles, and he had holy Bibles in a knapsack, and we're both going after each other. He goes, what do you have in yours? I go, Bibles. I go, what do you got, you got in yours? He goes, Bibles. Yeah, one was satanic, his was... So it was quite an ordeal. I wrote about it. But Psalm 91. I love that one. You say that you picked up an angel, but was there ever a time in your life where you like physically picked up a demon? Uh, not picked them up. They're just there. No. Just there. And you can physically like see them? Yeah. Sounds psychotic, doesn't it? Probably was, but <laughs> they were there as far as I know. They were there. Um, why did you choose to follow so Satan so persistently instead of just not having any religion at all, not believing anything? There's no power in that. I know, you know, I saw a week, you know, people were atheists, and, you know, I looked at their, you know, I, I looked into some of that, and I'm like, man, there's nothing there. You know, you got to believe in something, you know, and, and I think.
think that there was enough of, uh, now that I know what I know after writing that book, when I was six years old, I was calling out to God. When my mother drowned me, she drowned me in the ocean, and I was calling out then. So I think I had enough knowledge to, there was just enough in me, enough faith. Like he says, every man's been given a measure of faith. I had enough in me that, uh, to me, there was good and evil. I'm a black and white type of guy. I'm not kind of in the middle, so so I just thought I'm going to serve the dark side of them. Uh, Isaiah 45, 7 says, I created light, I created darkness, I created good, I created evil, I'm the Lord, do all these things. And my grandma used to pound that in my head, and that's kind of where I started. So I thought God was both good and evil. So I'm just going to serve the evil side of them. Did you ever try to make any kind of contact with your parents at all after? They're all they're dead. Yeah, I did. After I got saved, I went and witnessed to my mom. She was the first person I ever witnessed to. Did she accept you? Yeah, she was in a nursing home. Uh, Alzheimer's. Seven years, eight years I'd seen her, and I went, Mom, there's a God. I, I, I just met him, and you got to know about him. And I actually witnessed to my mom and said, can I pray for you? And I started praying for her right there. So I forgave her for everything. So. And then she died 42 days later. Two years. You said you saw demons in the past tense. Do you still see them? No. I, I think there's a bubble. You know, I go speak everywhere, and I have kids of all people, you know, 14, 15 year old girls say, Man, I, God just showed me that. You know, I've just so many people that are led by the Spirit. I, you know, it's like my daughter was, and saying, I just feel like God's got this kind of protective custody over me right now for a season. You know, I've seen people that I know are demonized, but as far as demonic. Could you explain a little bit more how you, what you mean by um, God is both good and evil? Um, you said At that God. moment, yeah. that's when I turned to Satan. Yeah, mm -hmm. I thought he was both good and evil. If he created evil, then he is evil. Okay. And the scripture that was pounding in my head was done wrongly. Mm -hmm. So I did forty-five seven. You know, I created. Okay. Yeah. So I figured he was both good. and you keep saying there's a bubble for a season. Do you feel like God's preparing you right now for a bigger task on the road that'll... I hope not, but I think thing. so. <laughs> <laughs> I get attacked so much, that, yeah. you know, mainly by the church, but but I, whatever he wants me to do, I'll just... You talked about experiencing demons and angels. Was there anything back in your childhood that, you know, positive or negative influences that might have been demons pulling you one way, angels going? My mom was definitely on the dark side. My grandmother's on the dark side. Uh, uh, and I think the lackluster uh, or the lukewarm Christian, we went to Catholic church and stuff happened there too when I was young. So, I mean, that whole thing set me up to turn later in life. You know? So there was no positive influence that you might have ignored or you just I don't, I don't, I can't remember if there was. I've blocked out so much. But when I was a kid, I don't remember. Uh, yeah, there was. Uh, a couple neighbors that I used to go to that were, you know, that I'd, I'd be bloody or scars on me or something. And back then, it wasn't like today. I mean, you could abuse people, and it just wasn't the same as, you wouldn't get reported like you would today. But I had a couple neighbors that uh, ended up older neighbors, uh, Mrs. Emmons and, and uh, Mr. Owens, that, I just went to their house every day for like refuge and gardened at one and took care of Mrs. Emmons, but they both died and I'm going, what the hell, God? Everybody's dying in my life and you know, all the positive is dying and all the negative is still there, so yeah. But those two people were, I know I'm gonna see them in heaven. Um, you said earlier that some things that you, like seeing the angels and demons sound psychotic. What do you say to people who think you are crazy and don't really get into I was psychotic. I think without the mind of Christ, anything on the doesn't mean everybody that's not saved is, is psychotic. No, but Satan takes your mind. That's the, probably the best question of the day. That's one I always wait for because I always get asked that one. So that was a great question. Uh, I think on the dark side, it's it's just a slowly he starts capturing your mind. Do we get psychotic, uh, psychotic, bipolar, and schizophrenic? All that absolutely. The further down, who's going to plot to kill somebody? You know, so absolutely, and somebody doesn't believe that. The conversion again. Paul had witnesses. I got witnesses. I mean, people like own kids say, "I cannot." The four years is tremendous. The difference. Two psychologists that I actually administered to, and psychiatrists that I used to go to that no longer practice, and then they 
turn their life over to God and say, man, this is what we need. You know, so uh, I can't say anything to them. Look at all the people who don't believe in God. Jesus would walk in his room right now and, and on the air and half of us probably wouldn't believe it. You know, so I, I don't have, uh, it doesn't offend me if somebody says that, but I don't have an answer. Do you have some ideas about your next book? Have a what? Do you have some ideas about your next book? I don't want to write it. I didn't want to write the first one, but I'm 50,000 words into it. I'm 40,000 into my third book. Do you um, want to publish some other top book? No, it's about God now. So in this book, is the only one book you will write, you wrote about? I, yeah. The second book is the last four years and it delves into some of the stuff in the first book. First book is three quarter light or dark, one quarter light. The next book that I have in my mind that God's given me is three quarter light and one quarter dark. We're going to delve back into some stuff that I have probably three or four hundred questions from all around the world of wanting to know about Maggie Rich, wanting to know about the different players in the book, and they're just feeding into my writing another book. If I ever write, I don't care if I ever do it. I didn't care about writing the first one. <laughs> and you said you got some demons in the book. Do you see like demonized people? What do people look like? If they're not demons, they're demons. <laughs> I mean, just ugly people, Christians. I don't care who they are. Just some of the stuff that spews out of their mouth is is I, as demonic as any de demon I ever saw. Yeah. So it's nothing physical. Just I mean, I've, that you get from that I've seen some pretty physical, you know, contortions of the face and coming after me. And a guy pulled, pointed a gun at me in a car, and he pulled me over in Arizona. I said, you're not going to pull that trigger. And his face was all messed up. And he didn't pull the trigger. God would not have had me stop. So what exactly do you mean by demonized? Like possessed or like they get their ideas from demons? Or? Well, if it's in you, on you, or around you, what's the difference? You've got to deal with it anyway. You know, we get a lot, I get a lot of questions about that. Can a Christian be possessed? Or, you know, we get a lot of, you know, I'm not in the, I'm not saying I'm not in theology. I am. I love the Lord, but. If, if it's affecting your life, then it's just semantics after that, as far as possession or if what's controlling your life, you know. And if you're so controlled by the dark side that you, you, you're not serving Christ, then to me, you, you, who chooses to say who you serve, you either for me or against me. So that, it's pretty simple to me. And what are some common misconceptions that Christians have about Satanists? That they're not savable. You know, you can't. One Satan is always a Satan. It's, it's like saying once a whore, always a whore, once this, once that. You know, it's all, to me, we're all saved. <laughs> we can all be saved, you know. We can all be, uh, my life is uh, definitely a declaration of that. And that there, there, there's no power, you know, there's no power in them. You know, that they don't, you know, they're evil. And from 3 to 5, 15 every morning, they're, they're fervent prayer warriors. And they're praying against us and the churches and the pastors. And you know, on the light side, the effectual and fervent prayers of the righteous avail with much, but I have something, you know, they're praying. I don't know, we're all disturbed in some way. So our lives are being affected and, and uh, lukewarm or whatever. I think that some of that penetrates our lives and we start getting back into the world. To me, that's just as bad as Satanism. What is Satanism? You know, to me, it's putting an idol above God, any idol. You said that, um the most attacks you get are from the church. Mm -hmm. Could you kind of explain the attacks that you, you do receive? Just, I have people in Panera move. There he is, mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, the Channel 4 thing didn't help. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> they kind of <laughs> sensationalized it, you know. But that didn't help. But I get people all the time. Even before that, I guess the story's gotten out there far enough that, you know, they think you're just crazy, like he said. You know, you're just nuts. And, and I was. I'm not denying that. But... Just verbal, you know, emails. I get death threats, you know. Uh, I think any time in a Christian church or any church, you see a big movement in the spirit, or you see somebody doing what God's called them to do, uh, there's spiritual jealousy there. You know, I think that the lukewarm, even yeah, actually the lukewarm is going to hate me because I'm speaking against them. But they hated so many before me. So usually it's verbal or just spitting on you or something. Do you think your book can help some readers face their darkness? Face the face their darkness. What's I can darkness? Yeah. Yeah. How, how to I think the book's 
written for Christians, though. That's what the funny thing is. Maybe, maybe some readers have held the same question with you, and you're trying to um, show your ideas, help them how to solve their problems. Yeah, the, there's a lot of thoughts I had in the book, things I was thinking of, hating God and all this. And I've, most of the emails I have are people who said, man, I've had those same thoughts. I've gone down that same road. I didn't kill cats, and I didn't sacrifice to Satan, but what's the difference? You know, so the book is touching a lot of lives to face any kind of dark. You know, how dark is dark? It's just the absence of light. So, so if some, some readers have different opinions with you, how do you think about it? Have different? Different opinions. Op opinions? <laughs> yeah, opinions. Oh, we all have an opinion. <laughs> you know, I haven't experienced that from God that, that it's, you're either going to believe it's real or it's not real. If you believe it's real, it's going to touch your life. If you don't, you're going to think I'm crazy and you're going to walk out of here. And it's the same thing I do every day. I go out and speak everywhere. I'm really going to just, but one person gets touched, and that's all I care about. Michael, tell us what's coming next. I know you've got um, a couple of dozen speaking appointments coming up. I know you've been to Hollywood once. Um, rather than rather than wait for questions on this, uh, tell them about your, your trip so far about the possibilities of this being made into a movie? Well, we're filming a documentary are. currently. It's going to take us a year to shoot it. Prolific Pictures out of Hollywood. We're doing a documentary film, a full-length uh, film, uh, Icons looking at it, you know, who did Blindside and Book of Eli. I already got offered, uh, over the last time, I've been to Hollywood four times now. And the last time I was there, I had $18 on me. I needed $900 in diesel to get home at my bus, and I didn't have, I had 18 bucks on me. And I'm going, God, you know how I'm going to get it home. And I had a producer hand me a check for 400000 bucks right now, cash. You go, cashier's check, we want your movie. And I had to look at that guy, and Will Smith was sitting here, and about 12 other investors, and I had to look at him and said, there's no godliness in you. You have a form of it. And scripture came out. I had to give him back. I said, God said, I can't take this. And I was in front of 12 different men, 400000 bucks, which I looked at and go, <laughs> There's my gas money. <laughs> but the Lord just said, no, hand it back. Because he wants me dealing with people that are of, of integrity that, um, again, secular. I want to make a secular movie. I don't want a Christian movie. If they're going to make a movie, they're going to touch lives. You know, I don't want courageous or fireproof. I'm not saying those are not great movies. But we want, I want something a little different. You know, and I think God wants something a little different. So uh, I've got 12, 15 speaking engagements right now. Uh, we're filming a documentary film. Again, every couple months they'll come up and shoot me in a warehouse in Guthrie or something. Uh, there's a couple uh, movie possibilities. Again, they're looking at, uh, when I was back last time, Matthew McConaughey or, or uh, Mel Gibson playing my part, which I'd rather have Mel, because the whole Hollywood Prayer Network I'm a part of that thinks that if he plays my part, it will turn him, it'll get, make him closer to God. And, you know what I mean? They turn him back, and everybody's looking at Mel like he's something evil. He's just part of the world. You know what I mean? And God's all over him like he's over us. And to me, I look at it like maybe I'm there just to minister to him. If we never have a movie, you know, I've had dinner with him a couple times. It's it's neat, you know, it's neat to, to know those people, but it's not neater than knowing God and what God wants me to do. So, uh, uh, ten years from now, you still I, I know you're getting all these offers, but is this what you really want to do? No. What would you like to minister yourself? Just, just, just this. I'd rather be here than in Hollywood. I'd rather be here talking to you guys than uh, in some ten, church of 10,000. You know what I mean? But it takes it all. I go in little groups of four or five people all the way up to whatever. Uh, I'm gonna, I want to do ministry. That's all I want to do. I want to open, you know. If somebody can use my past as, and life, and, and the neatest thing is the life now I got. I mean, that's an example that we can walk in the Lord and not have to keep on stumbling and not have to keep on choosing sin and not have to, you know, to go back. We don't have to go back and forth. We just walk in Him and be secure in Him and, and uh, spread the gospel. That's what I want to do. What did you do before uh, for I had work? a tour company nationwide. I was making 80000 90000 a month, uh, making good money, uh, spending good money, making good money. I was in jail and came up with the idea of, after I memorized the New Testament, to get back to Christians, I came up with the idea of this door company, a service company, and I'm sure it's satanically charged, and, and uh, got out, had a master's degree, and started uh, started this door company. Up. 
was very successful. Until it wasn't. Until I spent two hundred thousand on the settle. And I was only making eighty. Uh, how did you come out of uh, I got I was two windshields got broken out. Uh, they got paid I left with three hundred dollars on me. I'll tell this real quick. Came back, had four hundred on me and spent seven thousand dollars and was down two months. So I spent seven thousand dollars, left with three, came back with four. Just people just I'm telling you I'd be in a coffee shop and somebody say, Here Lord, tell me to give this to you. And they'd give me three hundred bucks cash. Or my daughter would put money in my account. I never have to say anything. I never asked for money. It was just people just they're led by the Lord. That's the neat thing. I don't have to say anything. You know, I spent seven thousand dollars on a six thousand dollar or six thousand mile trip for two months preaching in Colorado and uh, California. Take off with three hundred because the Lord said to go, and I went and come back with four hundred and I paid for the whole trip. So it's good. Michael, we want to thank you for your time. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Jose, uh, can we burn a copy of that Channel 4 thing to a disc for him? He doesn't have the physical medium. It's out at a producer's mm -hmm. place right now. Yeah. Okay. Should. All right. And I've, I've got a book in my office I'm going to sign for him because he was kind enough to sign a book for me. So we've got a couple of minutes. You can come up and talk to him personally, say hi to him. But if, if we could give him one to two discs that he could take out of here, that would be a nice service we could do yeah. for him. I'll see what we can do. Okay. Thank